Okay, welcome back. Um, I am actually on the schedules tab right now, and I have our our schedule that we uh, wrote together opened up. I just wanted to do kind of a quick refresher. Um, we covered that you can click on this little box right here, and that will pull up the task list for the uh, Gantt chart. And as you can see, these top few uh, items here are actually action items. Uh, the first task starts here with the primary conduit. It tells you how many workers you need on your crew. That's predetermined by uh, either someone in the office who puts this schedule together or if you're managing your own project, you would be responsible for that, but it tells you how many workers you have planned for that task so that whoever writes a schedule will know how many workers to assign it to. Uh, talks about the start date here, and you know that as soon as you click on this, it'll actually assign it up here to this worker you know that you can actually clone a schedule so once you get a schedule complete for a worker you can assign it to other workers so you don't have to recreate it over and over again for each member of the crew you can just select their name and send it right to them and it'll populate um you uh know that the schedule's adjustable from four to seven days per week, and this is just a template. Uh, this, the program doesn't care if you uh, schedule a five-day week and then end up working seven days a week. It's going to accept whatever data you put back into it, okay? So it's very forgiving. Uh, it's hard to make a mistake. Uh, even if your original schedule has the wrong format, when you go to enter time, um, you can get that time entered in under any format that you want, and it's going to record exactly what happened on your project. Uh, the same with the hours. You know, these are templates, and you want to get them as close to uh, what you uh, really plan to, to do as you can but um, not critical, okay? Um, what's critical is getting the right time entered in on the right days and actually capturing what really happened on your project. Okay, so we know that once we write these schedules in, we're gonna click on populate data. That's gonna assign the hours to each task under the days. So this will tell your workers what to work on first, uh, when to work on it, how many hours they have to complete it. It's not critical that they go in this order. For example, if uh, you know the, all the material wasn't there and they weren't ready for the primary conduit, they could start on the secondary conduit. And you can enter your hours, um, you know, for secondary conduit on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday instead of primary conduit. The program again doesn't care. It's going to record what you put in there. But this just is a guide to them on the order that you would prefer they work on the project. They need to stick to that as close as possible based on material and manpower and equipment and things like that. But if you're doing your job, it should flow real nice. Uh, if they have a problem uh, on a task, give them permission to jump to the next one and work on that until the problem is solved for the previous task and then go back to it, okay? So uh, we also learned um, where to enter time. So enter actual hours right here. I'm gonna click on that. And this is where you'll enter the time uh, each day for what your crew did. Uh, I told you that you can right click anywhere on here and click print and you can print a copy of this to hand out to them. They can hand write their hours in every day, give those timesheets back to you. You can log into here and enter their hours. 
as long as you have administrator access and you do I gave that to you when I gave you your login credentials um, anyone with administrative access can go into any page in here so it gives you access to everyone's timesheets you can go in there you can enter the time in every day for your crew um, but uh, you know if you're on a large project and you have uh, quite a few crews and a lot of workers um, you're probably going to want to simplify that time entry and that's one thing we're going to look at today um, I asked you um, when we went through this lesson on uh, writing these two-week rolling schedules I asked you to enter time for your crews and I gave you kind of a template for doing that and now I'm going to show you why I wanted you to enter those hours I asked you to make one crew look good like they beat their hours one crew to look bad like they didn't uh, make their hours okay so let's uh, close out of here and we're actually going to click on the reports tab and you'll see that there is an employee efficiency report here so I'm going to select that now this basically tells you uh, how your crews are performing and how your individual workers are performing so obviously if it's a crew they're all uh, contributing together and it shows you how they are performing as a group but if you assign an individual task to someone it will show how they're performing uh, individually and sometimes if you're having problems with the crew and you want to figure out where the problem is you know for a week or two you can schedule individual tasks to workers and find out who the problem child is but uh, green numbers are always good in this program red numbers are bad just to let you know that you have a problem kind of raise a red flag right so you can see that the first crew has beat their budget by a little over 11 percent now this tells you the workers uh, wage how much you're paying them this tells you how much they're earning you so this guy we're paying him $15 an hour but he's earning us the equivalent of $16.91 so almost $2 an hour uh, he's operating almost $2 an hour above his pay grade and so this just gives you a kind of a record of what goes on on your projects and how employees are performing and so what I find in businesses is that people like to promote people they like and that ne doesn't necessarily mean that they're profitable just that somebody likes them okay and I've been through companies where people have been promoted because somebody liked them so long that they're working way past their uh, profitability okay you can see this bottom group here who had some struggles on their task and we don't know what the problem was perhaps they ran into some rocks and got delayed or could have been a material uh, issue or could have been the general contractor was in their way or it could have been that they're just not skilled I don't know but you can see that we're paying this person 1875 an hour and on that task they only earned a 1786 so you know that's a losing proposition that's something we need to correct if it's just a uh, one task issue then it's probably not a big deal but if it turns into a trend and here's your lifetime equivalent wage right here this is over all of the projects how they've performed if uh, it becomes a long-term issue then we need to do something here and 
I'm going to tell you something. When you start uh, telling people what to work on and how much time they have to work on it, it's just going to get done. And if there's a problem, if someone slips behind, normally it's going to be a training issue. You just need to give them a little training. It's not because they don't want to succeed and it's not because they're not trying to succeed. It's because you know, they're just not qualified to succeed. And, and so this will identify training issues. Once you get them that training, uh, normally in, in my experience, um, they come up to, to their level of production and, and things work out. But there are, you know, cases at times where someone just either has a bad attitude or no desire to work and um, a lot of times where I see that is, you know, I end up using a lot of what I'll call rental labor, right? And um, you really have to be on top of your game with rental labor because they know they're only going to be there for a little while and they're going off to another project, right? And so you really have to uh, succeed psychologically to get them to participate and perform sometimes um, but that's that's where I see most of my uh, difficulties uh, with normal employees who come to work every day and and you know value their job they're gonna get the things done but this will give you a report card here. You'll be able to figure out who needs training, who's slipping behind. If it's a long-term issue, um, you know, you need to do something about it. If it's just a task or two, find out what the problem was and solve it for them, especially if that task is, is something repetitive, like on a high-rise hotel and it's the tr you know, trim out, the trim package. You know, you've got 17 floors to trim out and you're on the second floor and you see this trend. Get that fixed immediately and find out what the problem is, okay? Now, there is another report in here called the Job Summary Report. It's the all, all, overall health of the project. I'm going to do a separate video on that. But once we update that, these hours or these uh, columns right here will uh, populate for us. We kind of need to refresh that report so that it can fill in this report here. And uh, we'll do that in a different video. But it'll tell you, you know, what your average labor rate has been for the duration of your project, the efficiency of your manpower right here. Um, it'll tell you what your allotted labor dollars are and what your actual ones to date are what your allotted hours are and what your actual hours to date are. Um, and then, you know, your project equivalent wage. So that'll tell you, you can compare that to your average labor rate to see if you're getting more bang for your buck, right? So if your average labor rate's 20, but your people are performing at $22 an hour, you know you're running ahead of your average labor rate and that's a good thing. So some valuable information in there you'll be able to see. And that's why I wanted you to uh, enter the hours in and, and uh, for one timesheet and, and kind of skew them so we could get a contrasting view right here. Okay, um, let's take a look at some easier ways to get your hours back into your project. Okay, you can see we're on the Employees tab. This is our uh, roster of employees for uh, our company. And I'm just going to select Sam James right here. And you'll notice a little tick box right here that says Eneb Enable Web Login. I'm going to click on that. That's going to give this employee the ability to log in and look at his own schedule and enter his own hours. So I'm going to give him a username. And a password.
Now, I will tell you that I'd appreciate it if you uh, took a little care with your passwords because I have been hacked into before and uh, probably very soon, like maybe this week, I'll be updating um, the password uh, creation so that it has to meet certain uh, parameters just to make sure that it's secure and good. Um, but for the time beings, being, I'm going to just make this Sam James, Sam James. Keep it simple. Then I'm going to click uh, Update Edit. And I'm going to open him up in a new uh, different browser. So I find that for printing pages that Google Chrome works the best, but the software will work in any browser. Um, so I generally use it in Chrome. Uh, it does work well in Firefox as well, but I'm going to go ahead and add, enter his login information here. And password. and click submit. That will open up uh, his uh, login access. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept my terms for him and I'm gonna check this so it doesn't pop up again and then I'll click continue and select the private school project. And that will uh, give uh, Sam access to his uh, schedule. So I'm going to click on that, Interactual Hours. This is the same thing uh, that we saw for the entire crew, except that it's only Sam's schedule. Sam can come in here and he can put his own uh, hours in here every day. So you can actually give all your employees login access. I've done this on pretty good sized projects. And had all my employees enter their own time every day. Um, one thing that I like to do on my projects is I'll set like a, a laptop in my office and I will let them know that, hey, there's a laptop in my office. At the end of the day, you're welcome to come in there and log in and enter your time. Or if it's more convenient for you, you can do it on your smartphone. So they can actually just log right into the program off their phone and enter their hours every day. Now the reason I put the laptop in the office is because I don't want to have anyone complaining to me that I'm forcing them to use their data to enter time every day and now I need to pay for their phone service. So I offer them the computer, they can come in and use that and they're welcome to. What I find out is that they all enter the time on their cell phone because they don't want to have to come in the office at the end of the day. They'd rather just log in and put that time in right there off their phone. But it eliminates the argument of whether I need to pay for their phone service or not, okay? Uh, so this is one way they can actually pull this screen up on their cell phone or I won't really call this an app because it's not an app that you buy from the app store, but it is uh, a different screen formatted for mobile entry. So they can also click on that and they can select their date right here and it will tell them, you know, give them their list of tasks. Uh, since we already entered hours, uh, Sam has hours entered in right here, but normally that would be blank. He would select the task that he worked on and put his hours in for the day. It might, might be two, 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 and two, I don't know. But, uh, you know, whatever Sam did that day, he'll enter this in right here. And you can see this is nice and, and uh uh, compact so it fits on the phone real well. It also, um, you know, becomes larger and easier to see, harder to fat finger and that sort of thing. So 
um, it is a uh, handy method of uh, getting the time in on the cell phone. So there's your first line of defense. If you want, you can assign a login access to all your employees. You can make them responsible for their time, have them go in and enter that time in every day. Um, and that solves your problem right there. Now we'll look at another option. Okay, back at the Employees tab, uh, we are going to select the foreman here, Mr. Tom Wilson, and we'll click Edit to bring his information up. Now you'll notice there's another tick box right here that says Master Timesheet Entry. If I select that, it will give any employee the ability to access all of the schedules. In other words, the schedules for every employee. So if I'm the foreman and I want to assign uh, this access to one of my lead men or maybe I'm the general foreman and I have other foremen underneath me and I want to assign a timesheet entry to my foreman uh, I can select this option right here to give them access to all of the schedules and they can go in and update the timesheets for all of their crew members so this is um, the way I like to go because I like my foreman to be responsible for the hours. They know uh, who came late, who left early, um, you know, who wasn't there that day. And that just kind of cuts down on, you know, the inaccuracies and the disputes over time and stuff like that. So, um, if I'm on a project and I have several foremen working for me, I will uh, give them this uh, master timesheet uh, access and I'll expect them to update the time for their crews every day. Okay, so that's method number two. Um, there's one more uh, advantage that we have here. I won't really say it's a, a method of entering time, but it's a method to help the foreman get the time entered more quickly and just a little bit more easily and we'll take a look at that now okay again we're back at the employees tab and now what we're going to do is actually create a specific crew so i'm going to click add new crew it's going to pull up my employee list now, on our underground feeder crew, we selected uh, Tom Wilson as the uh, foreman. We had uh, Sally Jones and Sam James. So I'm going to give this a label. I'm going to make it um, underground feeders. Uh, and then I'm going to click close. So now I have my underground feeders crew right here. I'm going to go into schedules. And I'm actually going to add a new timesheet just to start fresh here. So that will pull up the next two week rolling schedule. I'm going to click edit. And instead of uh, selecting individuals I'm going to select crew right here and I'm going to select underground feeders crew and then I'll click view schedule now that automatically populates my schedule with the three people that I have on that crew okay another thing that it will do for me and I'm not going to go through this process but once I rewrite this schedule and I'm ready to enter time, Tom Wilson can go in and just enter his time um, for the day 
and it'll automatically flow to the other employees on the crew. So if you have a crew that does the same thing every day um, and the foreman works along with them, as he enters his time, it's automatically going to enter the time for the crew. So he doesn't even need to individually go in and, and manually put the time in for each individual. Just saves him some time, him or her. Um, and then it, from there it is editable. So if one of the employees showed up late, he can go back in and edit just that individual. Or if they left early or if they weren't there, he can delete the hours out. Um, just a little uh, way to kind of speed things up for the foreman if you're having them or lead man, lead woman uh, enter the time. Uh, it'll make it simpler for them just by creating crews like that. Okay, so those are the methods that you can use for entering time. There's uh, lots of options there uh, to get it done quickly. Um, we'll do a separate thing on printing your uh, weekly uh, oh, um, timesheet report so that you can send it into your office. But um, there is an approval process that has to go through right there. So the foreman and the superintendent have to approve the time before it gets sent into the office. Try to create uh, you know, multiple, multiple levels of um, checks. The employee has to sign off their timesheet so that they're verifying that their hours are correct. I have a, seems like on projects, normally if in the past had a lot of problems with employees saying, well, you didn't pay me the right hours. And it drives the uh, payroll department nuts, right? Every week they have to make corrections like that. So by having the employee verify their hours and then the foreman verify them and then the superintendent verify them, if there are any discrepancies, they usually get them worked out by that point so that the report we send into the company for payroll is generally very accurate and we eliminate all of those phone calls the day after payday to make, you know, rearrange hours and um, straighten out pay problems. But we'll cover that in a separate video. Okay, thank you guys and have a good week.